no doubt about that. Oh, look at her, she looks like a witch. <laughs> I love that. That's, that's beautiful. They had eight children and a great Dane. And they, they couldn't afford any of them. They used to come in the morning and say, you want to take my picture, lady? And I said, I sure am. <laughs> that's Lake Michigan with the future Olympics. <laughs> Olympic personalities. I call this the Botticelli girl. She was a, a real find. And this is the Lower North, which ran eight city blocks and had the most abundant kind of activities and energy and, and humor that I, ever, uh, that I ever experienced. And this was on the streets and the surround. And they're all cheeky. And these were smart asses, all of them, but there was something wonderful about them, too. That's what I call future, future humorist, or maniacs, one of the two. And this is in the big, big, big market in Chicago. And I thought these were just absolutely incredible. And one agency here bought a big one of that. And these were wonderful mothers and, and uh, <laughs> the one in the corner. She, she's not too happy with anybody. And these are just, uh, it's a nice, a, a nice sampling of the older ones, and this is a lovely sample of some of this, the little guys. And, and this one, they're so absorbed in the whole thing, I, I don't know what they're doing. Ma, mana matzas. Well, it's something. And she was, either she was angry or astounded or just ecstatic. It's just hard to tell. And this one looks like she could be trouble for some, um, you know, for some adoring admirer. They were wonderful faces and beautiful people. Here's another one. But he's mad at the world. And he's not going to get over it all that quickly. You don't get such determination easy. And this is the big, uh, this is the, the Lower Norris Ballet. And uh, they were all having a ball. So it didn't matter whether some of the steps weren't correct. They, they couldn't care less. And this is the future, uh, the future, <laughs> The future soldiers in the American army, and that shows how how eager or how averse they were to going to war. And he was just beautiful. He won a prize, and I think he still was trying to figure out why. <laughs> this was a millionaires' club in the middle of Chicago. And I was fortunate enough just to do a spontaneous type photography and uh, put on a couple of shows for them. It was a penthouse. It had, they had two floors. And uh, it was quite a marvelous place for, for just frivolity and, and enjoying yourself. You can see Michigan Avenue below down there. Which, which is the big boulevard in Chicago. And this was one of their, their uh, you know, their very lavish at, uh, food serves. And uh, the chefs were Puerto Rican, so the food was excellent. And this one you probably recognize from the age. 
This woman was absolutely uh, polluted with with champagne. <laughs> and, and she couldn't she couldn't care less. And and here was a woman that used to visit Australia. And when I first came out here, she said, "Oh, you must go and meet some oil millionaire that was living here." Well, I never got to see him. <laughs> Somewhere in the interim, I just lost the I lost the contact. There she is again. And she was absolutely, she, she was sort of loca, but in, in a wonderful way. And this was sort of a, it looks like a study in a, a, what am I going to get for Christmas and who cares somehow. This is part of Ramsey Lewis trio that I did a lot of uh, publicity for. And this was the bass player, L.D. Young. And he was very good. And this is a, a, a black singer that was just quite beautiful, and uh, she sang bluesy songs, Kiki. Well, I forget the last name, but it was Kiki something or other. And there's Ramsey Lewis, because he studied classical piano, and he had this trio that he became quite popular with, with the jazz, jazz enthusiasts, and, uh, and he could actually play, and he, he could read music. I remember I went to a concert where he played Brahms' second piano concerto, so I was duly impressed. And this was uh, probably a Dixieland band, and they were really, you know, they were really into it, and just quite, quite pleased with themselves. And this guy just thinks the world is a crock of shit, you know. And, but, but there was something about this whole thing, this was taken about 3 o'clock in the morning, and uh, I just thought that was, and I, I won a prize in Chicago with this guy. And he was uh, just, he was just skeletal enough and skinny enough, and he had a wonderful face. And, and he'd, he'd go out with me, and we'd spend all night looking for good backgrounds and stuff. <laughs> he used to work in a jazz music store, and... Uh, but he was, he was quite well educated, and, and uh, I, I liked his company. He was very pleased when we won the prize. And this was a dancer who, who would dance any place that I asked him to. And this is the man that got me into the tavern club, E. Willis Jones. He was a, a calligrapher and a designer. He, he was an art designer, and he was a really wonderful human being. And I just like this guy. He's so gentle and, and so, he was so meticulous about the way he worked on the violins. And that's uh, my youngest brother. He doesn't look like that now as much, but uh, uh, he, he got his teeth knocked out in Tijuana. Uh, during the Second World War, because he was in the Marines, and the first time he got into a real bad scene, they knocked his two front teeth out. And that was uh, my blessed husband that gave me a one-way ticket to Australia as, as a divorce gift. So you can see uh, that he enjoyed his life. That was after a party we had. And, and here's, here's a, a friend of mine, a very close friend. This was her daughter, Noli, and, and her youngest, David. You can see what his future was going to be like. <laughs> and there's Dolores. That's Dee. And she was just beautiful. And she was like a femme fatale. I mean, you just looked into that face and you just, uh, you sort of fell in love with her. She had such a, a, a gentle but passionate and, and moving kind of small chin and a wonderful gaze. You couldn't help but sort of be fascinated. And this one, I, she came in for some model shots and, and I just decided that this was the best of them all. <laughs> And that's me, 
uh, shooting some architectural um, for a, an architectural booklet of some some big building that was next to bigger buildings, and, and they just wanted the whole thing to look bigger. So I kept going up further and further, <laughs> and it was it was being Chicago. It was windy. It was right on the Chicago River, so you can see how uh, you, you can see how how I was at that particular time. I used to get up and down very easily. And I almost look human there. <laughs> yeah, it's a gentle smile I've got there. I, I, I must have been amused by something. Uh, this is when I got a one-way ticket to Australia. And that's me in Hawaii. Oh, I had a ball in Hawaii. I, lo I spent all my money. I, I, came, I came into the country at five dollars American. And this is, this is, believe it or not, this is Portsea. And, and there, there was a monastery not too far away where, where nuns, a convent. And that was, the nun went down to the sea and left her back. There she is. She's coming back. And I thought it was terrific. The contrast of her by the sea and, and the portfolio. And that's Bruce Petty. Whoever can remember what Bruce Petty looked like at that, at that time. And uh, I spent a weekend with he and a Chinese artist and a, a, a British girl. And guess who that is? Yes, that's right. Peter Carey, I shot his first wedding up in the, I think it was up in, in Gippsland, something. No, it was closer than that. And this, this is a very uh, wonderful friend. I think she's here tonight. And that's Trudy Fraser. And I think she's absolutely beautiful. And this is up in, um, up near Mornington. And these children would just came from the sea and they were just going back up, up the hill. It was, it was close to that hill that goes into Frankston. And that, of course, is the gardens. And I, I just loved that shot. I did this for a publishing company. I mean, they wanted to see a, an ethnic group, the way people spend their Sundays. This was for Kodak. And these two children were, were they were so, they were so good. I couldn't believe it. That's near the Yarra, and and um, the non-polluted atmosphere of the, uh, you know, the the Yarra, the Yarra area there. And this guy was having a ball. He he couldn't. He really couldn't care. I actually was going to wake him up, but then I decided not to. I just kept going. And this was one of the first models from Austria, and she was quite beautiful. And I really, I really liked everything that she did. <laughs> and, and this was for a newspaper here, and the father is the trainer and, and of the elephants. And that's his little son. And I thought it was, it's very endearing that. And you know who that is. Tommy Hanlon. With, with, with a sort of clown face. And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know whether he was happy or not. And this is a private club that you're really, you're really not sure whether you should go in or not. You don't know what's lurking in the shadows in there. And that was close because I like tunnels. And I just love this. I think it, it just is, it, it looks like an Australian, uh, Australian ballet number. It's, it's so well spaced. And that was early in the piece when I took that one. He didn't lose any teeth at that particular point. But I thought it was a great entrance. 
No, he's getting angrier all the time, you know. That was just before they closed up the park. And look at them. They had a ball. And that was the last tram that, uh, you know, from St. Kilda. And they were, just, they were laughing and enjoying themselves. Uh, so I, I just thought it would make a good shot. And I like night shooting, so I, I did one of the city which, which um, the government used for, to send overseas because it made everything look terrific here. And this is just a lovely sort of a still life. And how that, those feet hurt. This is Brother John. He's from, he's from America. And he was with the Alvin Ailey show that was at the Princess Theater. I think it was second or third year I was here. And that's another uh, thespian who was uh, really intrigued with himself. He was quite photogenic and he could sing well. And this is the Alvin Ailey group, the Harlem Dance Company. And I just like I just liked the way the the uh, with the umbrella and the silhouettes, and just the feeling of of movement. Hey, Ole! He was good, this guy, because he's play he sang and played the guitar. And I would say that he was a gypsy. And I like that just simply because I just like it. There's something there's something very graceful and. And that's another Ole. Muy bien. I go higher and higher. That was a wonderful woman that I met that played guitar and, and uh, cast, castanets. And uh, she was just a very funny and clever Australian girl that had Chinese blood. So she, she looks a little bit Spanish, somehow. And there's the guy she married. And he was, he was from a, a flamenco background, this one. And he was full of himself, too. <laughs> and there's Veronica again. This may, maybe, uh, this was an indication of of future di divorce. I think, I'm quite sure that they finally got divorced. I think he took off with one of the dancers from another troupe. But there they are. And I love the, I, I love the uh, character of the hands in this, with the scarf around his neck. And she, she was stubborn enough to give him a hard time. It's what you don't see. And that was, that, that's the father of my son. That's Jose Diaz. And, uh, and he had a beautiful face. It was really soulful. And that was, that was when he sewed on leather. Because he used to make boots in Spain. In Santander, I think it's from the north. And everything, everything he did had character in it. And there I am. You can tell how skeptical I am about everything. <laughs> but I love the hat. And uh, I really like that thing. And there's my son in, in, uh, in a, a big tub on a really hot day, like, like today. And he was, having, he was really having a good time and splattering all over the place. And there he is, a little older, and I was trying to get him interested in photography, even though he was small. And he thought he was Superman, though. And there he is, with a, with a very, very beautiful woman that I used to know. 
and her name was Angela, and she really was an angel. She was so good that I felt, I felt absolutely uh, like a billion, you know, in contrast. And there's Jose with Stephen at the zoo, and they, all, they, they look like they're enjoying themselves, and that's why I like that shot. Oh, they, you know, what a big time, this one. You know, you'd think he came from the Wild West and was just bored, you know, with everything. And I don't know why I took this, except I like the, the different textures of the, the human hand with the cigarette and the... Uh, and this is a bunch of Italian migrants, undoubtedly, because they, 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 they shouted at me in, in Italian, and, and uh, they were coming home from a long day, and uh, I just thought they were terrific. They made me laugh. And this was in Echuca at Rodeo, where they had uh, Aborigines riding some of these horses, and I, I thought the country people just... Uh, yeah, you can see what really intrigued me. <laughs> I was fascinated by uh, by rear ends in those days. And I, I would think that this was either, it's not country races, I think it's in, the, in Plymington. And I just like the various stances and seriousness and, and here, they must have been waiting either to pay or to collect. And none of them look very like they got lucky, as far as I'm concerned. But they were real Aussie looking, the way they wore their hat. And, and, and this is the perennial, this guy swindled me because he said he couldn't understand the way I spoke. And, and so he gave me the wrong number. And the, the damn horse that I picked came in. So, and that, and that was a Melbourne Cup, this one. And I, I just loved that. And the little girl couldn't give us stuff, you know. And this is Flinders Street. This was an early shot that I took because I really loved the hands. You know, you see the two guys in the back having a big, big... Uh, Actually, they were arguing with each other. And this woman, she just gave this old guy, who was half drunk, a real hard time. Victoria Market. And that's an easy shot to identify. And how about that? This is, this is a young Australian boy, and he was, he was the greatest. And somebody gave him a gun, and just he was going to show you how tough he was. And there's the back of the house that they lived in. So they all, they already, you know, were uh, they were planning uh, future robberies, I would think. And that's across from the studio I had in Fitzroy, which was the best studio I ever had in my life. It was beautiful. It was on top of a, st a state savings bank, and it was an incredible place on a rainy day. Well, that, was th that was later in the day. Not exciting, but quite impressive in its own way. And there's, uh, you know, the guy that did the thing on Ned Kelly, the painting? That's his mother. She was a terrific lady. And this is stuff that I, this was a big poster I did for uh, the Brotherhood. The old guys playing cards inside the, you know, and I thought they were beautiful. And this is all with available light. This is shot with avail, yeah, because I, I didn't use any flash or anything. So, and there she, she, she was a, 
a woman, I think it was on a day when they had some special dinner or something, and so she was, she was absolutely ecstatic. She didn't think she was going to get that good a meal. And he wasn't very happy about the whole thing. But I, I, I liked the backlight on him, and he, ha he certainly had a face full of, full of all kinds of feeling and, and either torment or and the children. The children enjoyed themselves in that place because they, they gave them a, a, a kind of freedom. I don't know what it's like there now, but, but it was certainly a terrific place for children. And they had a bit of space and, and a little playground outside. And, uh, and they had this thing hanging out in the back. And I thought that was terrific for photography. There's a bit of movement on the left-hand side, but I still liked it. I like the, I liked the design of it. And these, these girls were just stuffed, you know. <laughs> Look at the face on this one. He stinks or she stinks or, or, or I don't know. I, I can't remember what she was saying. That's Helen Jackson. She used to be with 3AW, and she's um, she's working in films and uh, and theater in Sydney now. And uh, and this was a wonderful model. She was from Tasmania, and she finally married a farmer. And and uh, I, I never understood why. And this is lovely, lovely Gwendolyn. She deserves all the appreciation that she can, uh, she can arouse. And this was a friend of hers and also a friend of mine. And I shot a lot of pictures of him and he was a very photogenic kind of personality. There he is. Well, he was more than just photogenic, you know. But he, uh, the women liked him very much. <laughs> and this is a, a wonderful a woman who I took a lot of f photographs of, and she was, she was just absolutely chic and wonderfully, you know, she was a wonderful subject. And there is Gwendolyn de Lacy's brother, and he was, uh, He's quite a, a well-known, uh, he was, he's in audio, you know. And guess who? There she is again. She looks like she's just either come from a pretty wild time or, or she, she's thinking about going to one. <laughs> and this is one of the best nudes that I've done in this country. This, this was a Selenese girl who is some, some well-known well uh, uh, hairdresser, he sent me, and we did a lot of stuff of her, and she was just incredible. And this is a British woman who has done a, a, quite a bit of work for La Mama and, and in theater in this country and in films. And she's, she's very talented. And this is... Uh, this is a really good friend, Jenny, and uh, I did some stuff of her in uh, some of Shakespearean plays, and she was always, she always looked absolutely incredible on stage. And this is Libby Tanner. She's in, in films and on video, and, and she's on television now. And she, uh, she showed, there she is again, and you couldn't, you, you couldn't miss the kind of personality that she had. She just made everything light up or, or, or otherwise. And this is a very good musician that I know, who's very hard to find these days. I, he, would, he, taught, he taught my son for a while. He taught the guitar and, and, uh, and he's very photogenic. He, he looks like something from Basin Street, you know, 
and, and um, like the, one of the old blues personalities. And he knows, he's, he, he knows that he's very photogenic. And here's a real Australian thinking, now why have I been drinking this beer all these years and, 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 and why don't I feel happier about the whole thing? And there is Joe Dolce. That's, that's the, uh, the guitarist. And we, were, we, were, uh, we went early one morning to take some publicity. And that's the kind of stuff we got. And that's his, a, a group of players. And I did some uh, publicity shots. And that was over in Fitzroy, I think, you know, somewhere like that. And uh, they were wonderful. They were really good. Good photographic uh, material. Now, that was a play at Melbourne University, which uh, was a very interesting play. And this guy, he, he, was, he was quite charismatic. So anything I did of him just turned out really impressive. And this was a play that uh, Gwen was in, Gwendolyn. And uh, this, this woman I, I knew fairly well. I think... She, Oh, oh, these guys. Oh, this was a riot. I mean, they looked like they were waiting for Godot. They were, they were waiting for the truth to come by. And there's a, from, that, that was another play at La Mama. And there's Gwendolyn to the right. And the other one is the British actress. And this is Dickens, and that, that what a <laughs> that that play was a, it was a riot. It really was Barry Dickens or something like that. <laughs> and you know, this girl was in a very interesting play, and she was from Central America, I think. And uh, I just liked this shot of her. I thought it was terrific. She, she wasn't even trying to look. And this is another one called Elegant. And the stuff I did for this is really unusual, I can tell you. And I really got lucky with this woman and her daughter. And this was another, uh, Wendy, Wendy Joseph, she, she was the one that directed this. This was a one-woman play. And it was very interesting, and she was a very good actress. There she is again. She was pretty well fed up with uh, her situation. And it was a peculiar situation because it was a bit psychotic. And, 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 and this one, she just wanted everybody to know that she was still in it. And, and, and that was a peculiar show, that one, because I got a lot of good stuff. And they used this, this picture. And this was one with a well-known actress, was, um, what's that Irish playwright uh, and, and, and writer? Well, this was one of his, his masterpieces. And it was quite, a, it was, it was quite an interesting bit of, of uh, theater. And here's one, a, a girl called, a, a girl, Face Stranger. And uh, Gwen was in this, and also this guy. And I just thought he was incredible. I thought he was going to fly to the moon that night. And there they are, you know, wondering what their fate's going to be, obviously. That, that was another one I did. That was in color. And that's the the girl face stranger and I, I really loved this shot I thought it was worked out very well and this was another uh, another photograph from the same play well, they obviously don't get along too well but they look like Australians come to think of it I, I don't know why I say that because I'm oh, this, this was uh, elegant this, this thing, and I'm in this, I don't know how I got in there, I really don't. 
but somebody included me in this one. And I, this was a, this was an incredible woman, and the little girl was just incredible. And it made a a, a, a really interesting program. I didn't know if, if they'd use it because uh, I didn't know. If, yeah, well, <laughs> see, I, I didn't. I could. I wouldn't have known that they were going to use it. But it really worked out well, and a lot of people uh, liked it. So there she is. She's still, you know. She's still wondering how she survived. And uh, it's been a long time. Hooray.